ruckus. So, we just finished up a series revealing the enemy's plan. And we talked about the devil's plan and how he tries to trip us up and how we can avoid that. But we also talked about what we should be doing in the meantime. And that's spreading the gospel. But how do we do that? Hmm? Man, go ahead, get your pen, get your pad, and get your Bibles. Because we're going to jump into that topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Stray Word, the Bible study series where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of the unnecessary fluff and distractions. Man, today we're starting a new series, man, and I'm excited about this one. This series is called How to Spread the Gospel. And if you look around right now, I'm in a different environment. I'm actually in the middle of a, a training session uh, where we're learning how to spread the gospel. So what I want to do today is a little bit different just to get us kicked off in this topic. I want to show one of the learn one of the tactics I've learned on how to share the gospel. It's a tool. And this one that makes it very simple, makes it easy to remember, and makes it helpful for those who may have never heard about the gospel. Also, it makes it something they can share easily. So it's duplicatable. Let's jump in, man. This uh, method that we have is called the three circles. So check this diagram out, man. It's a cool little sticker that I've placed on my phone so that I can take with me whenever I'm spreading the gospel or sharing the faith with others because that is what we are called to do. So we're gonna talk about this and what it means and we're also going to leave it up to you. I want you guys to jump in and tell me scriptures that we can use when sharing the gospel. Go ahead and drop those in the comments as we go along. And of course, as we go throughout the series, we're going to be dropping a lot of scriptures. It's going to help us. But let's see what uh, scriptures we already have that we can use with this tool. So if you look at this diagram, there are three circles and they represent the gospel through pictures and symbols. It's very easy to remember. This first circle here represents God creating a perfect earth. God created a perfect earth in a perfect state. He created everything and he said it was good. And of course, we can look at Genesis chapter one to um, back this up. And I'm sure you can find some more scriptures that you can use to explain this to someone who's never heard the gospel. Well, what happened in Genesis? Of course, there was the fall of mankind. We see a man and woman here created in God's image. Uh, and God wanted his image to be multiplied, but they failed to sin. And when they failed to sin, sin was introduced in the world. And we look at this next symbol here. This next symbol represents a broken world. Why is the world broken? Because guess what? Now we are separated from God and separated from his presence. Sin has been introduced and now we're a slave to that sin. It created a hole in our hearts, man. One that only God could fulfill. But see what we do, if you look at these arrows, man, that is letting us know what people do in a sinful state. They try to fill that hole in their hearts with other things. Lust, sex, drugs, you know what I'm saying? Fornication, addiction, uh, self-righteousness. Anything that man can try to fill that hole with, they try to. But it never frees them from a sinful state. It actually just continues the cycle and brings them right back to the brokenness they're trying to get away from. What scriptures do you think we can use to explain this? 
Think about it. Doesn't the Bible tell us we have all sinned and fell short of his glory? Doesn't the Bible tell us the wages of sin are death? Doesn't the Bible tell us about how we are now in our sinful nature? So think about some scriptures you may use if you're explaining the gospel to someone who has never heard it. Now look at this third circle in the diagram. The, cir the third circle represents what Christ did to get us out of this cycle of sin. Christ died on the cross and he became the sacrifice, the payment of, uh, of death, which is the cost of our sins, not his, because he didn't have any sin. So his blood paid the price for our sin. Now, if you see in this diagram, there are three crosses. We know that when Christ was crucified, that there were two others crucified right beside him. Both who were guilty of sin as well. Both who, who should have been on that cross due to the, the, the punishment for their crimes they committed. One of those men said, you know what? You're not, the, you're not the Christ. You're not who they say you are because you're sitting here with me on the cross. You, you are a false pro, you are a false Christ, man. You can't be who you say you are. You can't be who they said, who they proclaimed. But yet the other one chose to believe. And he said, you know what? I know I'm guilty. I know I'm a sinner. I know I should be here on this cross. But you, you are innocent. You shouldn't be on this cross right now. What can I do to be with you in heaven? And Christ told him, man, repent and believe on me. And he said, I do. And guess what? Christ said, you will be with me in heaven. So what are the two options we see that are given as we look at this last circle in the diagram? The circle that represents a way out of that sinful cycle. We have two choices. We can either believe or not believe. So if we believe on Christ, believe on his sacrifice, believe that he died for our sins and rose again. And live a lifestyle according to that belief and according to that faith. Then guess what? That is what is going to save us from our sinful cycle. Someone said something that really moved me. They said, someone said something that really moved me. They said, it's not any works or anything that we can do that can help us to um, live a sin-free life. It's not anything that we can do to please God. No matter how much effort we put in, how hard we try, you know, how much we uh, try to, to extend our faith, Nothing we can do will make us obedient to God. So what does? The Holy Spirit is the only thing that can make us obedient to God. It's the Christ in us that makes us obedient. And that's only through getting to know him and loving him. If we love God, then we're gonna to want to do what makes him happy. We're gonna learn his character and learn his ways and we're going to want to do those things. Man, I'm glad that we could um, open this up and share a way that we can get the gospel out to other people. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's using a little picture diagram. Yeah, I know it's not an extensive study that we did today, but we're getting into a very extensive topic. So we will be getting into a lot of scripture in, our, in this series, but we want something simple because we want something that we can share with others who may have never heard about the gospel before. And this is a perfect tool to use to do that. Well, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to uh, really begin to investigate how we can do what you have called us to do to spread the gospel, to make disciples of men. Dear Father, we thank you for allowing us to be led by the Holy Spirit and really get the revelation of what the scriptures are telling us is required of all 
believers. We don't want to just uh, be believers who want to be saved as far as uh, not going to hell. We don't want to just take a, a fire insurance per se, but we actually want to act out and live out your will for our lives. And we know that your will for us is to go out and make disciples of men. So Father, as we go through this series, I ask and pray that the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. Teach us the ways that you have shown through your scriptures. Teach us the way that the Holy Spirit can really connect us with those we come encounter with and share the gospel and make disciples. Follow up when we, when we share the gospel. Follow up with people and really disciple them into the faith so that they can go and do the same thing. We pray this not that we get any honor, but that God gets all the honor and glory out of our lives and that we may be lights to show, to show men the true love of God. This we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. All right, man. I'm really excited about this series, man. And like I said, we're really going to dig into the scriptures in this series. So get prepared to do so. And also, man, if you know any tactics or any uh, tools that we can use to go out and share the gospel, drop those in the comments because I know there are a lot of them. There are a lot of diagrams. There are a lot of little modules or sayings that we can use to share it with people who have never heard the gospel. So let's go ahead and dump all of that information so we can share with each other tools of sharing the gospel. We're going to jump right back into this uh, topic next week, man. But until next week, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.